Hello and welcome to Encryption, the tech tips and tutorial channel. In this video tutorial, we will learn how to install Apache ActiveMQ in a Linux machine. Let's get started with the preparation of the server and installation of prerequisites. For this demo, I have launched an EC2 instance in the Amazon uh, AWS cloud with the name ActiveMQ. It doesn't matter where you have the server as long as it is a Linux machine. To connect to it via SSH, uh, let's get uh, the connection info first and then uh, connect to the EC2 instance. I have the private key on my downloads directory. So I switch the current working directory to downloads and press Ctrl Shift V keys to paste the SSH command along with its required options and arguments. Type yes if you get a prompt like this. Oops. I got a warning and uh, the connection is not successful. This is because of the permission uh, set to the private key that is too loose. I need to tighten the permission. So I run chmod space 400 and the key name. Then clearing the screen, I rerun the SSS command to connect to the server. Okay, I am logged in. Let me show you the version and distribution of the Linux machine. As you can see, it's Ubuntu 22.04.3 Jamie Jellyfish. After we log in to a Linux server, it's always a good practice to update and upgrade the package manager and the local packages. Since it's a Ubuntu machine, I update and upgrade the packages with the apt command. Press Y to continue. If you are prompted like on the screen, wait for a while till the process is complete. Just hit enter to press the OK button if you get a prompt like this on the screen. Pending kernel upgrade. Again, if you get the other prompt titled daemons using outdated libraries, do not do anything. Just hit the tab key to navigate to the OK button and then hit enter. Now the first step in installing the ActiveMQ is to install the Java JDK or the Java Development Kit which is the runtime environment for Java applications. As you can see, Java is not already installed on the system. So let's install it by running the command sudo apt install default dash jdk space hyphen y. Wait until the installation is complete. Again, hit enter on the prompt as I mentioned earlier. Here to press the tab key and hit enter. The installation is completed now. Now if you run java space dash version, you will get the default version of java JDK installed on this Linux system. Moving on to the next step, uh, let's create a group named Artemis. Oops, I need to run this command as sudo. So I type sudo and double exclamation mark which is a shortcut to run the previous command. Likewise, let's also create a user named Artemis and add it as the member of the Artemis group. Here, hyphen s space slash bin slash false sets the user's login cell to slash bin slash false. Setting the login cell to slash bin slash false means that this user won't be able to log in uh, which enhances the security. Hyphen g Artemis assigns the user to Artemis group. The user will be a member of this group. Hyphen D space slash opt slash Artemis specifies the user's home directory, which is set to slash opt slash Artemis. This will be the default location where the user will start when they log in, even though they can't log in with slash bin slash false as the cell. The Artemis is the username to be added. Now let's move on to the next step for installing Apache ActiveMQ. We need to download the installation file, which is available on the official website. The website link is as displayed on the screen. You can also find the website link in the description below this video. This is the latest version of the active MQ at the time of recording this video. As I will be downloading the file using the wget command, I hover over it. Right click and click on the copy link address. Then I go to the server's terminal change the current working directory to slash opt and install the packages uh, wget and curl. Although curl is not required for now, 
I'm installing it as I need it later. As you can see, the packages are already installed. Now type sudo space wget and control shift b to paste the download link. It's now downloaded. Let's extract it using sudo tar space hyphen xbjf and the file name. Also, I will rename this directory to a short name that is just Artemis. Next, we should modify ownership and permission of the directory slash opt slash Artemis. This part specifies the new ownership. The first Artemis before the colon represents the new owner of the files and the directories and the second part Artemis after the colon represents the new group owner. Also let's add the executable permission to other users to the directory slash opt slash Artemis slash bean. The next step is to create an Artemis broker instance. An Artemis broker instance is like a special folder where everything needed to run a broker is kept. For your information, a broker is like a massive system. The broker includes things like settings and files for storing data and logs. It's best not to put this instance folder inside the main Artemis folder, which is usually at slash opt slash Artemis. So we do this separation to make it simpler to upgrade to a new version of active MQ Artemis in the future. After you run the command as displayed on the screen, you will see a prompt asking uh, you to enter the default username and password. Press Y to allow anonymous access. Now as you can see the installation is completed. To start the active MQ, you can run either of the two commands. Let's run the first command beginning with sudo. ActiveMQ is now running on the background. To access it via the browser, we should enter the URL as shown here on the screen. To check if I can access the ActiveMQ console via the web browser, I take the server's IP instead of the local host. Unfortunately, it's not working. To troubleshoot the issue, I try a couple of tricks. The first cause of ActiveMQ not being accessible via the web browser even though it was installed and it is running without any error. Maybe due to the port not being allowed from the EC2 instances security group. So I head over to the AWS management console and whitelist the port number 8161. Still, it's not accessible. To find out the possible cause, I log into the EC2 instance and call the local host URL with the port number 8161. Nothing is output. Checking the HTTP status code, we can see it's 302, which means the page that we want to access is temporarily unavailable or is moved to some other link. I suspect it's not accessible because the local host is a refusing connection from the remote. So we should try editing two files to allow remote access to ActiveMQ. Just follow me. I hope uh, it will work. After you have edited the two files as I have done, rerun the active MQ.
to check if it works, go to the web browser and reload the page. If it displays a blank face, wait a minute and reload again. Sometimes you may need to reload a couple of times and it should work. Here we go. To log in to the ActiveMQ console, use the default username and password that we set while creating the test broker. As you can see, I am logged into the ActiveMQ console. To run the ActiveMQ in the background, we should run the command as displayed on the screen. As you can see, the Artemis service is running on the background with the process 16767. To verify, go to the browser and reload the page. If it's not loading on the first hit, give some more hits and you will get the page loaded. Okay friends, that's it for this video. Please drop your comment on the comment section if you have any question or any query. I hope the video was useful to you. Please subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon. Thanks for watching and subscribing. See you in other videos. Till then, have a nice time. Goodbye.